celebrate the first dress of the day. All right, so what would be a typical stressor for first thing? Computer problems? Yeah, some, I mean, that's a universal stressor, right? Uh, that we all run into those computer problems from time to time. So how do you normally handle when you're, when you're busy and you're in the middle of a project and, you, and your computer like blanks out or you lose material? 3, 13, 7, ah, computers are gonna be the death of me, I hate computers, ah! Or however you would run. Now, from next time, <laughs> computer problems, <laughs> Then you treat yourself to a, a nice glass of juice and some sambusa, and, uh, and, you, and you celebrate a little, right? And then you get back to what you need to get back to, okay? But the point is, stress is not an event. It's a perception of an event. And we can use humor to color our perception of reality. Right? If we can laugh at or poke fun at the first stress of the day or celebrate it, we can do the same with the second, the fourth, the seventh, the tenth, the thirteenth. And, and reminds us that we have power over our emotions. Yeah, it's hard to do sometimes. But if we can just remember to GPS it a little bit, sure enough we'll be able to, uh, we'll be able to overcome that. Complain to yourself. All right? This is one of my, my very favorites. This is you, uh, you call your, your own answering machine or your, your, from your work phone to your cell phone or your cell phone to your home phone. So one phone to another that you own, somewhere where you can take messages. All right, so as soon as you start to get worked up or feel pressure or stress, you pick up the phone, you dial your own number, and it would sound something like this. Beep. <sighs> Hi, Scott. This is Scott. Uh, if you're like me, and I know I am, you're not having a very good day. Uh, boy, my self-esteem is so low that even my imaginary friend won't play with me anymore. Oh, boy, I don't know. I just don't. Uh, it just drives me crazy. Uh, uh, no need to call me back. I'll just see you when you get home. Hey, do me a favor, will you? Clean up the place a little. All righty, I, I love you. Bye. All right, what happens? Number one, we immediately release the stress, right? I mean, how worked up can we be when we're leaving a message for ourselves on our, on our phone? We can't be. The, the fact that we're picking up the phone to call ourselves, stress is gone. That's the first benefit. Second benefit, when we get home and we're listening to our messages, we hear our voice, we're thinking, who's that? Oh, that's, that's, that's me. <laughs> and then you, re you recognize your reactive stress pattern because you're thinking to yourself, wow, I was pretty worked up over something that really wasn't that big a deal just two, three hours ago. The only way to change a reactive stress pattern, first, is to recognize it, and second, to choose a strategy to do something different than you're now doing to relieve the stress. And the third benefit, is when a loved one comes home and says, honey, how was your day? This way you don't have to relive it. You really want to know how my day was? Come here, come here. This, this message number two, <laughs> and four, and seven, <laughs> and 10, and 12. Come back tomorrow for the sequel. <laughs> oh, but what happens if you get the wrong number when you're calling your home answering machine? You can relieve the stress on somebody else's machine. All right, first you need to make sure that caller ID is disabled. All right, then it would sound something like, uh, beep, surprise, we're in town. Can't wait to see you. We'll be over about seven. We're bringing the kids and the new goat. All right, we'll see you at seven. We love you. Bye. People get home at 6.15. Honey, quick, 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 come, come listen, to this, listen to this message. Listen, listen, listen. Who is that? I don't know either, but they're going to be here in under an hour. The place is a mess. We have no food. You go, you go get some food and I'll clean up. What? How do I know what they eat? I don't know who they are, but they must be friends of yours if they're bringing a goat. Have some fun with it. Just 
get it out. It, it's, it's a crazy thing to, to call yourself, but see if it works. See that, and that's the point with these. They have to be just a little bit crazy, a little bit out there. Give yourself permission to, be a, to do something a little bit different because that truly does break the emotional pattern of, uh, of what it is that you're doing. A feel-good file. So a feel-good file, so with those post-it notes that, the, that people are going to post, some employee appreciation or for a promotion or whatever it is, you, then you gather those things up and you put them in a colorful folder or, uh, or, or any time you get a, a card from a, a spouse or maybe a little, little uh, coloring project from a, a son or a, or a daughter or a performance appraisal that's positive, put it in a feel-good file. Put it away so that... Uh, when, when, when things are going rough, it's a wonderful way to, to help you turn on the GPS is when you read through things that make you feel good, all right? So any, any kind of card or note or, or, or anything that makes you feel good, keep a feel-good file close by, and then when you're feeling a little bit down, you can go to your, your feel-good file. Flush away negative people. Now, what does this mean? Okay, when, when uh, every time we let someone bother us, you know, if we let, if, if somebody makes us angry or we allow someone to make us angry, in a sense, what we're doing is we're turning over our power to that person. Sometimes the last person in the world we want our power now owns our power because that's what happens when we let somebody anger us. You know, no one sh can make us feel inferior or worse without our permission. So we're giving them our permission when we, when we do this. So flush away negative people means next time somebody angers you or something, you just go to the bathroom, write down their name on a sheet of toilet paper. <laughs> and then you just flush it away. Whoosh. And then you're saying is, they're not going to control my power. Here's what I think of, here's what I think of them getting, getting me upset. Whoosh. Okay? Hold on to your own power. All right, so these are things that called the one-minute humor break. It's ways of breaking the pattern of how you react to stress. All right? If, uh, if you have a quick temper... If you get impatient quickly, which sometimes I have to admit I uh, get a little impatient at times, the one-minute humor break, just choosing to, to put one of these techniques into play will help you deal with those situations. Great way to, uh, to GP. Uh